there bookish friends, my name's Gabby, thanks for stopping by my channel Lefty Reads. In case you haven't heard, let me tell you, we are already more than halfway through the year of 2016, which is crazy, crazy. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freak out book tag. I swatted a fly with that. This was created by both Chammy from Read Like Wildfire and Ellie from Ellie Jane, so I will leave the links to their channels down in the dingle hopper. They created this tag in an effort to get us to reflect on what we've read so far this year and get us pumped for what we still have got to read. Question one is the best book that you've read so far in 2016. This is literally the hardest thing in the entire world because I've read so many, so many fantastic books this year and I just feel like I'm doing a disservice to pick one favorite when I've read so many five star reads. However, I've just, I've got to do it, you know? I've just got to do it. So I picked, surprise, surprise, Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I feel like I've talked about this book so much on my channel, but I just love it. I just... I just adore it. I understand that many people found this problematic and I understand why they would but I personally enjoyed this book a lot and I loved it and I just will never stop talking about it probably. But for this question I also do want to mention Delirium by Lauren Oliver. This is a reread which is why I didn't really pick this as my answer but I love this book so much. I think it's absolutely stunning and perfect and heartbreaking. And so, yeah, this would definitely qualify as well for this question. The second question is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2016. And I actually don't have an answer for this one. I've actually only read one sequel in all of 2016, and I didn't really like it that much. So... I don't have an answer. Question three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. Firstly, I haven't read this yet because it's huge. Absolutely huge. Wait, what is this? What the freaking heck? What? There's a short story in the back about Jason Clary. Holy crap. Anyway, this book is 669 pages. And I just don't know. It's summer. I want to be free and I don't want to be tied down to 670 pages of text. That's just, it's really big. Question four is the most anticipated release of the second half of 2016. And honestly, this one was tough for me because I feel like the second half of 2016 has a bunch of sequels coming out for series that I've not started reading and like obviously has Harry Potter which I have not read and I just feel like it's not got a lot that I'm super duper interested in, but of course when those books start coming out I will be interested. But I went with Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is like one of those villain origin stories I think for the Queen of Hearts and I'm really excited. I have not read the entire Lunar Chronicles yet, but I have read Cinder and I know that I like Marissa Meyer's writing, so I'm really excited for Heartless. Question 5 is biggest disappointment so far in 2016. I'm going with A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas and honestly okay no this is not the worst book I read in 2016 by a long shot I think I rated this like 3.75 out of 5 stars I really enjoyed the second half of the book like a lot but the first half was so slow and it made me feel so slumpy with all the hype that this book was getting I was just expecting to be absolutely blown away and I really enjoyed the second half but I wouldn't say I was blown away in any way shape or form and the more distance that I put between me and this book, the less I care about it. Definitely not the worst book, but it's very disappointing with how much everybody else seemed to rave about it. Question six is biggest surprise so far of 2016. And for that one, I chose 
Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This is the first Morgan Matson book that I ever read, and I actually only read it because it was on Pulsit.com for a free read. I really didn't know about Morgan Matson. I knew I'd heard the name, but I hadn't really actually heard that much, and so I kind of cracked this open not really knowing what to expect. I was just blown away. I just fell in love with this book. I thought it was incredible, amazing, perfect, phenomenal. It was just everything that I really needed it to be at the time. So I'd say it's my biggest surprise because I had no idea what to expect, but I definitely wasn't expecting to just fall absolutely in love and to just be wowed. And question number seven is favorite new author and what do you know? It's Morgan Matson. After I finished Since You've Been Gone, I was like, boy, I need to read more by this girl. I still haven't read Second Chance Summer, but one day, one day. Question number eight is newest fictional crush, which let me tell you, I could go on about for 10 bajillion years. But for this one, I picked Levi from Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. He is precious and adorable and perfect. He's so kind and he's got definitely like a little nerdy side to him. I just know that if I met a guy like Levi in real life that I would just swoon over him. So yes. He's like a puppy dog but in the best way. Number nine is newest favorite character and I had a hard time with this one. I ended up picking Lotta from And I Darken by Kirsten White which if you guys didn't know, I love that book. I don't know that Lot is like my favorite character as a human being. Like, she's not a great person, but she was just so interesting to read about, and she was so complex, and she has so much depth, and I just really, really loved reading about her character, and I look forward to reading more in the forthcoming novels about her. Number 10 is a book that made you cry, and do I even need to say it? Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. Number 11 is a book that made you happy. Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. It's just such an adorable story. And on the back there's a quote from Publishers Weekly and it is a funny and tender coming of age story that's also the story of a writer finding her voice. Touching and utterly real. And honestly I feel like they just summed up my feelings for this perfectly. This is just so cute and tender and uh, yeah what Publishers Weekly said. If you have read other stuff by Rainbow Rowell and weren't necessarily a fan, I still really recommend giving Fangirl a try. It just stole my heart and it made me feel just really good about life after I read it. Number 12 is the most beautiful book you've received so far this year. This is another really tricky one because I have bought and received a lot of books so far this year and all of them are just so pretty so it's really hard to pick but i've narrowed it down to two that i think are gorgeous in a more unique way my first pick is passenger by alexandra bracken i know that this isn't necessarily a unique cover but it's still unlike anything you really see in ya and it's just the colors and the font is just beautiful it's just a beautiful cover and then when you take off the dust jacket you have this little little tree thing and I love when things are on the hardcover that just instantly makes me like it a bajillion times more and just another little touch that I've never actually seen on a book before is that when they where they have the barcode instead of it just being in a square it's in this little like quadrifoil and I just think that's really cute that's just a nice touch it's just a nice touch and then the second book that I chose is this Stunning collector's edition of, wow, fangirl, haven't seen this book in this video yet, but this collector's edition is just so pretty, and I fell in love with it the second I saw it in somebody else's video. This little bubblegum pink color is, first of all, I don't own any other book in that color, so it's just a beautiful color, and I like the illustrations on the front, obviously, but then what really makes this the book that it is, what made me just covet it so much, first of all pink ribbon that's cute and then you oh you take off the dust jacket and there's this little latte coffee thing with Kath's name on it so that's adorable and then you open it up and there's these illustrations and it's just gorgeous and it's everything I could ask for in a hardcover. And the last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And that is another really hard question because I just 
honestly need to read everything on my shelves by the end of the year, but obviously that's not going to happen. So I picked a few books that I just really want to read. First off is Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. This is the sequel to Red Queen, and I have been meaning to read this sequel because I really enjoyed Red Queen. But I just haven't. I read like the first page and I just wasn't feeling it. I just don't think I was in the mood for it. The other two books I picked are books that I really only haven't read because I don't own them. And that's Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson, the only Matson book that I've yet to read. I've heard that it's actually really sad but really good. And also My Lady Jane by Cynthia Han, Bertie Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This book has just been all over the place lately. I've heard that it's so funny and everybody just raves about it. I really haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it. I just really want to read it and I just, I need to buy it so I can read it, but paying full price for books isn't really my thing. Well, that was the mid-year freak out book tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. I not gonna tag specific people but if you have not done this and you want to do it I say go for it you can say I tagged you if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up let me know down below if you have read anything I talked about if you agree disagree with anything I said let me know about the best books you've read so far this year subscribe so that you can stay updated on when and what I post also down in the dingle hopper there will be links to my social media like my blog goodreads twitter and instagram so go hit me up on there so we can connect more. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye bookish friends.